All right, can you guys hear me? Oh, I've entered the waiting room for this meeting. Okay, it will start in five minutes. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect, okay. All right, let's just wait till everyone gets in. you guys see my screen? No. Yeah? Yep, I see okay. it. Perfect. All right. Let's just wait till everyone gets in. Thanks for your patience, guys. We're still working on our server. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfectly. Okay, cool. Again, today's, uh, well, let's actually just wait till everyone's in. You're sharing your screen, but I can't yep. see it. You, oh, you can't see it? I can't see it. No. Oh, interesting. Um, can anyone else not uh, see my screen? Yes, I can see you. Okay. Um, let me. Interesting. Okay, I got it. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're here. That's perfect. Um, so we'll wait like like two more minutes and then. So are we having this every day? Every week, every Sunday. Oh, every week. Yep. Okay. Um, but for as far as you know, voice voice chat live trading, that will be every day. Um, okay. on, the, on the voice for Discord, not on Zoom. Zoom will be more for the classes. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. One person. There we go. Okay, so what is that? All right. Oh, can you good? Yeah. Yeah, I think we are, right? You can hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you guys can do me a favor, unless you have questions in the middle, if you guys can just put yourself on mute, um, unless you have a question, you know, or, you know, whatever, if you want to say something, it's okay. I just want to maybe make sure the background noise is not, you know, affecting the class or whatever. Um, okay, there's one. The class. It's like the we're class. back in high school. Oh yeah. This is uh this is ready for you guys can put this when you go to your next job and say, Hey, I got a degree, a master's degree in uh Owls yeah. Investing Group University. <laughs> so what will I get if I get A plus? Exactly. If you get an A plus, you better be making millions and millions of dollars from trading. <laughs> <laughs> and this uh, this session is recorded, so if anyone you know missed it, then we will send them over, and we will give you guys the powerpoints as well. All right. I think that. Um, I mean, whoever wants to, let me make sure. Borax. All right, I think we can get this party started. So I guess I can just start, you know. You guys good? So everyone can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. All, yes. All yep. good. All good. Perfect. Um, you know, I guess I can, you know, do like a little informal introduction about myself. Um, obviously, we've kind of, oh, I guess we got another participant in. Okay. Welcome, uh, Marcus. Welcome. 
Um, you know, I guess I'll just give an introduction. So I am Keon, as many of you guys know. Um, I graduated last year from Concordia University in Irvine, California with a bachelor's of uh, business administration, a concentration in finance. Uh, right now, I'm currently a financial analyst for a company called McDermott and Bull Executive Search. I've been working there for two, around two years. As far as trading, I've been investing in trading since I was around 15, 16 years old. Um, you know, as a kid, I, I, you know, I was watching my dad, you know, trade on his, you know, computer and, you know, watching all these, you know, TV shows like CNBC and all that. And I got, you know, interested right away. I actually was first a bio major because my mom's a doctor. Um, and once I took organic chemistry, I, I, I hated it. I hated bio. Um, so I couldn't do it. So then I switched to business. And since then, you know, obviously I went through the whole college route of business and finance. And here I am, you know, working a full-time financial analyst um, and trying to help people, you know, grow their portfolio, understand the stock market, understand trading and just become better traders and investors for their future. Um, Elkin, you want to give a quick intro to everyone? Yeah. Hi, guys. This is Jonathan Elkin. Um, I'm currently cursing the last year of business finance at Cal State Fullerton University. And I've been trading stocks for about three years, a little over that. And with options, I've been on options since September last year. And I, I like trading options because I find myself that I can move with the market. I, I don't try to predict the market and try to see whether the price of the stock is going to come up or what should I buy. I pretty much do it every day. I try to see where the market is going to head and I try to head with it. And that's what I like options pretty much. is probably a, the most profitable way to trade that I find. All right. All right. Well, let's just get this started, huh? All right. So I guess, you know, we'll, we'll start with, you know, what are actually stocks, right? So before we go into options, we want to understand what are, what is a stock? So a stock is a part ownership of a company. When you own a stock in a company, you actually own a percentage of the company itself, including its assets and a percentage of its profits. So let me give you an example. Um, Cause you know, people kind of think, you know, there's been people who think about stocks like this way. Um, like say if a company issued a thousand shares and you owned a hundred of them, doesn't really mean that you can go to the company headquarters and take one tenth of the furniture. So if that company, you know, is a furniture company, right? You don't take one tenth of that furniture. It means that if the company was profitable and they make a hundred thousand dollars and they decide to pay it out to the shareholders, you would actually get one tenth of that hundred thousand dollars. So that would be $10,000 since you own a uh, hundred shares of that company. Um, a common stock is, the kind of most investors buy, common stock generally gives one vote at shareholders meetings for every share owned. You know, so if you have, you know, common stock, you actually, they will actually let you listen in to their shareholder meeting um, just for investor relations. Um, and, you know, they want to hear from the investors of what they can do to make their company better. So, and also with these stocks, you usually get a dividend, which I highly recommend it. We will go through the the classes, you know, talking about dividends and stuff, you know, later on. Um, but with these, you know, with these stocks, you know, you usually get a dividend, which is a payment that shareholders receive as the company succeeds. Um, and a preferred stock generally does not have voting rights and you generally will not find them uh, trading on exchange. But, um, oh, does anyone want to say something? Are we good? Uh, sorry. Uh, anyway. Um, with having preferred stock uh, shares, they have a preference for dividend payments. So it means that if there's a dividend, the preferred stockholder might get a bigger share and get paid quicker. So bull versus bear market, you know, we, we talk about this a lot. Um, you know, we say, yeah, we're bullish. You know, this market is bullish today. You know, when you, your mama says, I'm a, I'm a bull, right? So that, that means that, you know, we're confident in these stocks. You know, we're thinking that the stock will rise you know, consistently over time. So that gives a lot of confidence um, to, the, to the investor. Uh, and, we, you know, when we're in a bull, 
when we're in a bull market, uh, it gives an optimistic and positive expectations that will, good results will continue. So this leads to a growing GDP, um, increased jobs, and of course, the rise of stocks, which we all like to see. Uh, but, you know, in these days, we're in a, you know, over 40 million people unemployed. We have a pandemic going on, um, all these problems, yet you can see that our market is on fire. Um, so there are di different circumstances that go on. Um, but this, you know, if we're in a normal market, normal situation, environment, these are the type of aspects that a bull market has. So, you know, we're confident, we're, you know, we're buying more and more. The companies are pumping out, you know, revenue, uh, which leads to a bull market. Everyone, you know, good job reports are out positive. Um, and you see your portfolio, your, you know, long-term portfolio is greener than the you know, tall grass. Uh, and obviously the opposite is the bear market. You know, we're bearish, you know, so this is over time. Um, it's the opposite of the bull market. The economy is not doing well. You know, we see unemployment, you know, rising, um, just like right now, you know, fewer jobs uh, and, and end up being in a recession. And then the share prices start going lower. Um, and that leads to investors feeling pessimistic. So they're getting a little, you know, nervous. They're on their, they're on edge. You know, should we just start getting out, getting out of our positions and wait till this bear is over? Because, you know, people get scared. They have a lot of money. They don't want to lose all their value. Um, and if they hold their money, you know, it's going to take them a lot longer for that initial investment to get back to break even. Um, so that's why there's a lot of sell-off, right? So if there's a situation going on, you know, like in the beginning of the coronavirus, right? You know, they declared it as a, a pandemic. You saw the, you know, spy going down to as low as, you know, 220, I think. I think 220 was low. Um, and people were scared. You know, the market was dropping, you know, a thousand points one day. There was a halt, you know, a halt in the market. Um, so that's why, you know, investors do feel pessimistic during these times. But you know, when we see those Friday sell-offs, you know, we see those Monday sell-offs, whatever, um, uh, you know, it's not really a bear market. It's just people are selling off for their profits, you know, what they've gained. Um, or there might be some news, you know, you see, you see Elon, you know, you're bearish on Tesla because Elon said the price is too high. That, that means, um, you know, they're just selling it off. So a bear market is mainly for, you know, situations that happened, you know, the unemployment rates and all that stuff. So now we go to options. So options is obviously our main, are our main, you know, target in the chat. Um, so an option is simply a contractual agreement between two parties, the buyer and the seller. And this includes the expiration date, the strike price, and the underlying. So that's usually the stock ETF or index that the contract will be based upon. And options represent a hundred shares of the underlying. And so when can you sell? In the, in the United States, we can sell any time before the expiration date. So you, let's say we have a, you know, uh, an option contract that ends 619, right? So we can sell any time before that date. Uh, and if you're in the European market, you can only sell, at, sell that option contract during uh, expiration. And so with that being said, why do we trade options? Um, the main reason is because leverage, um, you know, we can hold a hundred shares of the underlying stock for a cheaper price. Um, so rather than purchasing the underlying stock outright, we can purchase the options, but what is a trade-off? So options has time decay. Um, there's an expiration date. So as time goes on, the, the theta will decay and we'll go through that as well later on. Um, it will either become worthless or turn into a long or short shares of the underlying and the leverage goes both ways. It could either hurt you as much as it helps you. So what's the difference between calls and puts? And obviously we hear these you know, all the time in our chat, you know, we're going for a call, we're going for a put. Um, a call is a contract that allows the buyer to buy hundred shares at the certain strike price up to the defined expiration date. A put option is a contract that allows the option holder to sell hundred shares at the strike price. So if we're going long, we're going on a call, right? So we want, so if you want to do a put, we're writing to sell the stock. So we're shorting it. Um, you can actually, you can buy calls, but you're shorting it. You know, you can buy an expiration state if the price is lower than the, you know, the initial stock price. Um, and same with the put. And so the call options obligate the seller to sell 
100 shares of the underlying at the strike price up to the defined expiration date. So that's basically saying you're shorting the call, which are bearish. Um, for put, a put option obligates the seller to buy 100 shares of the underlying at the strike price up to the divine expiration date. So you're shorting the put, which means you're bullish. And so once we get that, those down, uh, and we'll go over those more specifically once we start doing the technical fundamental analysis, but this is just more of the basic for you guys to understand the terminology. Uh, and when we start you know, going through these contracts, you can see the bids, the asks, the volume. Um, so the bid is the highest price that a buyer is willing to pay for the option. Specifically options, they're typically quoted in one cent or five cent increments. The, the ask is the lowest price that a seller is willing to sell the option at and the volume, the total number of that particular contract that is traded on that trading day. So this is very important. You know, when we look for these contracts, we want to make sure there's high volume, right? So we're not going to pick, you know, this contract or this contract or even this one, right? You know, I mean, there is a lot of interest in this one, but you know, when we're trading on momentum, we want the highest volume, right? Because we want our premiums to move. So, and the, this right here is what is the price that we want. We want to bid for this price, this 144. If you get the ask price, you're already paying a more, a, a bigger premium. And you can already be down right away when you buy that contract. So, you know, when you listen to us and say, you know, if, if Elkin says, you know, I want that right contract, right? So he doesn't want to pay this price. If he doesn't get this price or maybe like a 1.45, he, you know, he's not going to enter it because you're going to be ending up paying an extra premium. So this is very important. And this number and this number, we call this a spread. So, you know, this number right here will be the spread. So, you know, if you look at Tesla contracts, you know, the spread could be, you know, 1.44 all the way to, you know, let's just say five, right? So the spread is very high on some of them. This, this is great. You know, it's easy. Your contract will most likely fill uh, at the price you want. Um, but if it's a spread, you know, there's high volume, high, um, you know, IV, all that. But we'll get through that um, later in the class. Then the, one of the most important is the premiums. The premium is the amount you pay for the option contract. So for example, you buy a Tesla June 2020 940 call. The premium you would pay is $6.50, which would equate to $650. So, and now we're going to talk about break even. And break even is something that I don't really focus on. I'm just more focused on, you know, as we go through momentum trading, you know, I would just want to see my premiums go up, right? So this is this statistic. I don't really go through it, but I will explain it of how it works. Um, break even is the price the underlying needs to be trading at expiration for your trade to break even. That is not gain or lose any money. So, so here's an example. You buy the Tesla 940 call. The premium you pay is six dollars and fifty cents. Your break even on this trade will be nine hundred forty six point five. Why? Because you have the right to buy Tesla at 940, but you also paid $6.50 for the right. So the formula will be the strike price plus or minus the premium paid or received equals break even. So 940 plus 650 equals 946.5. So that's the break even price you're going to end up paying if you want to buy the shares. Um, and this is just a quick example with all the premiums. And, you know, so here's the stock price, right? Here's the expiration right here. So this is you know, the, your, when your contract expires, this is the strike price and you're going to call. So you're feeling bullish on this, right? This is the premium you're going to pay. So $3 and 10 cents, the premium times hundred, you're going to end up paying $310. So this is going to be your option contract. And I will send this picture out. I, I use this picture a lot, just made it super similar. When I was trading options, you know, in the beginning, I was so confused and all these, I actually thought, you know, you know, we would say a hundred. I thought, you know, a hundred was, you know, a number that I didn't even know about. Um, but I will send this picture out as well. And then Elkin up onto you. And let me actually move you to make you the host. All right. Your host Elkin. Okay, you can uh, share your screen whenever you're ready.
Is it working? There we go. Okay, you're on mute, by the way. You got to unmute yourself. Okay, are we good now? Yep, I can hear you. All right, so I'm gonna talk today about implied volatility and options, and also about a quick introduction to candlesticks. So we have implied volatility. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me. Oh, I gotta fix this here. All right, half definition. So the implied volatility basically is a percentage that it tells you the the price range that the stock is expected to move. So that reflects into the option price. And that's why higher implied volatility options have higher prices. So, so the importance of implied volatility, as I say, most expensive options have higher implied volatility. Um, option prices and IV indicates whether the market stocks believe there's going to be a large movement for this stock or a small movement. So pretty much the buyers and the sellers are putting their price options and their demand. And according to that option prices, they're going to predict movement. And you can have an idea of that. So how we apply it here, as you see, Option in mind increases and the buyers are willing to pay more. Hence, the IB is going to increase. This means, the, this means the option price is going to increase as well, which is expected a large movement. And if it's the opposite, if the demand decreases and the buyers are willing to pay less, that means the IB is going to decrease, which, which means a smaller movement is expected. So pretty much IB is going to give you an idea of the market sentiment. You're gonna see if a stock has implied volatility. Like when I start when I start trading, I usually was getting between twenty and forty percent of IV. That that was like my comfort zone because it was safe for me. Now I don't mind at all. Actually, and I'm not saying to do this right away, but when you get confidence, you can start trading stocks that have really high implied volatility. Like for me. I look right now between 80%. But obviously this is more risky because you're not you don't know where the movement's gonna go. Oh, that movement goes go can go either uptrend or downtrend. So that's why when I see a high volatility like that, an implied volatility that is so high, I sell my stop loss because I don't know where that I know there's gonna be a big movement. I know the stock price is gonna change the deviation range. And I wanna make sure that it goes the way I think. So implied volatility is great, but you gotta make sure you align it with the right, the right indicators that you trust. And if you are new and you don't feel too comfortable, I suggest you to trade between 20 and 40% IV. So I have some calculations here. So for the one year, one standard deviation range formula, this means this is the expected price that this, this stock is going to have within a year. And you can calculate it with a stock price plus and minus the stock price times the IV. So let's say the stock price is $250. So you have $250 and you do that. 250 times 15%. And that you're going to add and subtract to your... And you're going to add and subtract to your stock price. And that's going to give you a range of your standard deviation price. And that, the accuracy of the standard deviation is about 68%. And if you want to calculate for another time frame, let's say you want to buy a stock that have a seven-day expiration. So you go out here, you go stock price 
you multiply the IB, and then you want to do it, for example, if you said 30 days expiration, you do 30 days, and you divide it by 365, which is the, the days that one year has, and you do a square root. And that's gonna give you an idea of, of how, how much that story is gonna price. So for example, So if you see here, um, hold on. Can you guys see this new formula with the numbers? It's on this, the Google page right now. Can you see the 30 day expiration? No, it's just on the web web browser. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now I can see it. Okay, so for example, I did here a stock price, I have $250. You multiply that by 15% and you do the 30 days divided by 365 square root. So that's going to give you a 1075 that you're gonna subtract to that 250, which is 149.25, and then you're gonna add it, which is gonna give you a 260.75. So that means in 30 days, that stock is going to be between 249.15 and 260.75. And you can do the same with, uh, for example, if I do it with, let's do one day. So we go here, hold on, give me a sec. You guys can see my screen, right? The formula right now? Yeah. Okay. So we do 250 is the stock price. We do that times 15% implied volatility times the square root Of one, which is the day of expiration, divided by 365, and that is equal to plus and minus 1.96. So that means the stock price within that day is going to be between 249.04 and 251.96. So it's gonna give you an expectance of that. And okay, so that's all that I have for IB. Now let me go with candlesticks. Okay, so I have the Japanese candlestick pa patterns. In my opinion, this is one of the most powerful tools that you can have. It literally, if you learn how to read this, trust me, you're gonna be a step ahead of everything. Like, it, does make, it has made a huge difference for my trading. And because it doesn't only like, tell you, I mean, I'm, I'm. it doesn't only tell you like, the what's going on with the prices how much they're willing or to pay or to buy for but it also helps you to understand the psychology you can actually read what the market is doing just by reading the, the candlesticks so uh, again I, I use it with another with other indicators like volumes i like to calculate resistance and support and with those together you can have like you can either see if there's going to be reversals or continuations. So this is the candlesticks here, that's how they look. So what I have here, this is a bull candle, this is the, the body of the candle, and this is the lower shadow and the higher shower, shadow. Same with the bear, that's the body here, upper shadow and lower shadow. So I want you to see where they open. A bull candle opens here, it closes here, and it has a high here and a low here. So 
the scandal move within whatever it is a five minute, 15 minutes, let's say it's a five minutes, with five minutes the scandal open here, hit this low, hit this high and close here. And with the bear candles, it's the opposite. So you see how it opened here, it got a low here, it closed here and it got its high. So that's pretty much the basic of the candlesticks. That's pretty much what you're gonna see in the market. So after this, I have the spinning tops. So spinning tops are a very small body and they can be bull or bear candles. And they not necessarily need to have shadows, but they usually do. But the, the main thing is that they have a very small body, which the small body is gonna tell you pretty much there's a five, The small body is going to tell you there's a fight between bulls and bears for the price. And that's going to translate into indecision. So whenever you see an uptrend and you see one of the spinning tops, and we're going to get more, more into detail next week. I just want you to understand what's going on with the spinning tops. So you see an uptrend, let's say, and you see this spinning top here. Well, that means maybe the market is trying to form a reversal because now you have a battle between bull and bears. And Another candles with a small body are the, the high wave. So the high wave candles, they have a small body and they have very long shadows. They do need to have the very long shadows. And pretty much, like you're gonna see how initial the shadows are because they are way longer than other ones. A great example of high wave, you can always see them when the market opens. You're gonna see, you're gonna see right when the market opens. If you go into your chart, most of the stocks that you're gonna see, they have they have these higher, these these super long shadows, and that means pretty much there's confusion because there's a lot of buying and selling pressure. And look at like the stock can get all the way here to this height, and literally the bears are gonna push it all the way down, and then the bulls push it again, and it pretty much closes at the same price that it opened or, or closed. So that means there's confusion in the market. That means don't go with this candle, but you know that you can wait for a reversal or a continuation depending on the next candle confirmation and your other indicators. Same with the bear, the bear candle here. Like let's say it opened here <coughs> and it goes down all the way here. So at this point you're like, well, the, the stock price, the 10 is going to continue because the bears keep pushing it. And then you have all this buying pressure from the bulls and push it all the way here. And at the end, the stock gets pushed back from the bears and closes like right where the, right super close when they open. So I think that's that's all I have for today for candles and IV. I, I want to go to candles. I want to go to candles next week and I'm going to start telling you what type of spinning tops, spinning tops we have and when do they cause reversal. I'm going to talk about the hammer, the hanging man, the dodges, and then I want to do all the, the reversal patterns that are formed with one or more candles. Like you have morning star, evening star, the angry flying pattern. So I do want to cover those next week. Do you guys have any questions? I do, but I'm thinking about how to ask it. Yeah. So when looking at candles, are you yes. using this to look at options or just stocks in general? Is this like a generalization for stocks? overall and the, the stock chart okay okay yeah so you look at it you look at the stock price and you're pretty much looking at at the at the time that it's happening with the stock price okay so that's when you adjust the chart to look at either from yes one so minute, five minutes, 30 minutes an hour and things of that nature yeah so then you you can look at your level two for options and you see you can look the IB, the spread, the B, the S, and then you're gonna be like, well, because sometimes, yes, you can say, well, there's gonna be a reversal coming, and then you see a implied volatility 12%. You're gonna be like, well, 
this story is not going to move the way I want or story, or the implied volatility is way too high or you don't see volume coming. So yes, there's going to be a reversal, but is it worth for me to get buying power into this position? I don't know, maybe not. And the great thing about candlestick is that you can, all, you can put it in all time frames that you want. You can do five minutes, you can do one day and you can still work with them. It actually works pretty good when there's some candlestick patterns like the three white soldiers, that I wouldn't say for long term. So if you're trying to get in long term as well, you can you can use candlestick patterns too. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question about level two. Yeah. Um, so basically, if you see more buyers on the level two, doesn't that mean the price is going up? And if you see more um, sellers, that just means it's going down? Well, yes, because it, when you see the level two, so they're pretty much saying you what's the volume of the buyers and what, what, what the stock price they're willing to pay. So if you see that buying pressure, yes, that means it's the the stock's gonna go up because the demand, the demand keeps coming up. It's just like a, like any other market. Like the stock market works as any other market when it comes to the demand and, and buyers. Yeah, I use um, level two trading just to like have a you know background knowledge of what is going on in that stock. Like if I see a lot of buying orders, I'm gonna feel bullish, but it doesn't always determine, uh, well, for me at least, it doesn't always determine if I'm going to go in and play, you know, a call on that, right? It's just for me to know, you know, how the market is reacting for that certain stock for that certain day. Um, you know, the, I think, you know, for determining the option contract um, of, what, you know, the exact position I want to go in, it's more of the technical um, and the candlestick analysis. And we will get obviously into the technical analysis um, in the next next session for next week, yeah. um, but level two is a great way of having that background information on how the market is reacting for that stock. So it's pretty much imagine you have to bet on a football game. Would you rather bet on the game if you can watch it, or would you rather do it if you cannot watch it? That's why, like level two, time and sale, active trader. We're gonna talk about those two, and they pretty much letting you know what's the action right now. And you, you put all that together with your indicators and candlesticks and you can have a pretty good idea. How do you tell uh, what's level two and what's, what are the levels? Wait, can you repeat that? How do you tell what are the levels? How do we know that it's level two? You have to put that on your chart. It, it gives you an option on the right side of you're a married trade. Uh -huh. So you have to apply, you, you gotta make sure you're approved for, for, lab, for options. I think, I think he's asking like specifically the level one and level two. I can make a quick explanation on that. Um, level two yeah. is like the, the trading quotes include the data regarding current order books and market depth, but level, level one only quotes exclusively on like the bid and ask prices. Okay. Yeah so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, so I mean, level one is very simple. The bid and ask. Um, level two is more... Um, like, for example, in level one, you're you not able to see implied volatility. Mm -hmm. in okay. Level two, you, you can do it. Okay. Oh, and I have one more question. So a lot of traders that I've seen will use, a, like, a separate broker, and they'll have, like, a separate website for their charts but I've been sort of using everything on Thinkorswim. So are you guys using Thinkorswim as your, you know, where you're placing your, where you're executing your trades and where you're watching your charts or mm -hmm. like, how does that work? Yeah. Um, it's, I actually, um, you know, you can see me sometimes live where I will actually place the order on my desktop. You know, it will switch from my chart view to my trading view, but there is a pop-up, um, button that you can click that you can take out your charts, move it to another screen, um, have those charts visible, 
while you're uh, executing that trade. But what I do, I don't know. I, for me personally, when I execute these trades, I'll have the chart on my computer, but I will use my phone um, to execute the trades. It's just easy for me to see in exactly what price I'm getting. Because thinkers, it's kind of like there's a lot of clutter sometimes, you know, and especially with these high volume, high volatility stocks you want to you know make sure you get the right play right and the app is just so easy to see um i don't have a pro problem with using the desktop but you know when you're getting used to thinkorswim i would just prefer to have the charts up on your computer and then having your phone to execute the order that's just my personal um experience and that's just how i like it and obviously it depends on how you guys you know trade but that's just what i do Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Because I was wondering what's like the most efficient way, you know, I know people want to get in and out of trades quickly. So yeah. Yeah. yeah hundred percent for me, like when I, especially when I sell, I use my phone. It's just very easy for me to see. Um, the de Again, the desktop is not hard, but you know, when you play these big plays, you want to get that right price, the right contract. And so um, just my personal experience with that. Uh, do you use Active Trader? Because I've seen some videos on that. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use it for some background information. I, I'm mainly, me personally, I don't know what Elkin, I know Elkin you know, is very focused on the candles. Um, but Active Trader is also another way to figure out you know, what's going in with these stocks. Um, uh, the, I like Active, Active Trader because I can see what's the volume in different prices of the stock. So let's say a stock is at $45 and you see a huge big volume at $43 and then you see a, a small as volume at 45, then you can be like, well, that means that volume is pushing the price to come down a little bit. So, I mean, it's, I, I, that's pretty much what I like to do. I like to see what, what are the volumes in, in the bid and the ask for different prices. That's what I use Active Trader for. Hi, Tian. Hey. Um, so would you mind to share um, the chart that when you got into uh, BA last week, you remember? Mm -hmm. Oh, BA, when I said um, BA yeah, above 205? No, it was, it was the day oh, that you oh, said. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I can't show you. Let me, let me open up my Thinkorswim application. I can show you guys. me like two seconds okay thank you mm -hmm. hey elkin could you um uh, make me an admin right now so i can share my screen And we will go, you know, I'm going to show you guys my chart on BA, um, but we will go more in depth, um, you know, on, on the chart analysis. Let me share. Here we go. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me. Yeah. Perfect. So let me. And this was a couple days ago, right? This was. I think Monday. Mon was it Monday? Monday or Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday. It was, yeah, it was Tuesday. So oh, give me one second. Let me change this study. I don't know why I have RSI twice. And okay. All right. So I entered BA at around, let me, I got, I got to go back into my, I don't know exactly what price, but he, here we go right here. So for me, I saw this candle, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This candle right here, right? So, and you see all this volume coming in right here, Sray? This, yes. Yes. yeah, this made me very bullish of how the market's going to react. I mean, it's right in between um, the MACD and then right above. But with these confirmation, this three bar, um, I felt bullish. So I made, you know, a 175 call, right? Yes, you did. Um, and RSI, I mean, you know, I usually don't, um, 
use RSI as a full, you know, confirmation indicator. I use it as more of background information. But when you see how it reacts through this whole time frame, you know, it's not, it's not even, you know, people are not scared with this buying volume. You know, usually when it's very oversold, you'll see a nice drop off. Uh, and then if you see the MACD, right, it's not crossing. It's steady. The, the lines aren't crossing. Um, this was a little worrisome. I think this is where this is where I exited. You know, I got a little nervous about this red red candle right here, this red bar, because you know a lot of selling volume were coming in. I exited right here at 166. Um, but then again, it reversed, right? So that more, you know, the volume power came, and this MACD, the lines are still separate, so it's not crossing, and this that basically pushed up Boeing all the way to. I mean, it, it just kept going. Um, but, you know, for me, it was more the volume coming in. You know, this is more momentum, right? So it opened up good buying volume. Then we see this one right here. MACD is also looking good. And that's when I entered. So this was more of a confirmation right about here, 160, yeah, 167 right here. So this is where I entered. Um, and, if that RSI, I was very surprised that even if it was in the oversold area, um, it was stable. You know, usually when, you know, if I see Tesla, if, if Tesla is, you know, with that has that RSI, I would never enter it. I would never enter um, Tesla when the RSI is that over overbought. Um, but Boeing worked out perfectly. I wish I held. I wish I held Boeing longer. But um, this bar right here. This is what my risk management is as well. You know, I like to take my profit, get out. Once I see this, I get a little worried, but then again, it reverses. You know, then more buying volume, buying volume comes in. And this is another thing about having active trader. I didn't have active trader on or level two. If I did, I would know that there would ha they would have all these buying orders. Um, and that was my mistake. And that's why I exited early. Um, but again, I took the profits. I could have made more, but I was happy with the play. So... This is the key indicator right here for me. This, you know, the MACD, the lines are parallel um, and with this volume right here. So that's why I got in. So uh, so what time frame were, were you using? Was this, it so at the time I was using a five minute. Okay. I was using five minute, um, but right that, that one showed, you know, I think that was an hour. Um, and let me show you if I can get into. I'll just push my charts all the way. So, down. are you normally using five minutes for day trade? I use five minute. So, thirty minute is more. Uh, thirty minutes to an hour for me is my lines, my trend lines. Um, obviously, it's a little zoomed, but I use it for my trend lines. Fifteen minute, more for like you know mix of a confirmation level, and five minute I will I will enter. I will find that contract. Um, the one hour to 30 minute again is, you know, for trend lines, you know, the triangles, we will go over that stuff um, in the next sessions. Um, but five minutes is where I execute uh, the contract, just where I can see, you know, the, the candlesticks. Okay, thank you. So, Kian, uh, what makes uh, us determine whether to go for swing or just sell it off? Yeah, so when I, when I make these swing plays, yeah, so we will get into that more um, later, but I can give you a quick explanation. You see these points right here? Uh -huh. So this is, you know, these are indicators that it's bullish. We'll get into it more, but, and again, I have these setups, like you see this ascending triangle right here, or this, this trend that even pops right. up. Yeah. So I, if I have that on my chart, right, almost towards the end of the day, um, you know, I actually, you know, that's why I make those swing trades at the end of the day, right? You know, it's like 10, 15 minutes before this right. trend line will pop up. Um, but this doesn't always determine if I'm going to enter a call or a put this, these trend lines. It's, you see this volume at the end of the day, right here. Uh -huh. That's where I look yeah. at. Like uh, this one specifically is not end of the day, but you know, if the end of the day ends with these green candles, that means there's a lot of buying power going into. So they're feeling bullish at the end of the day. Um, so I oh, use these okay. trend lines to understand if the stock is going to become bullish or bearish. And that's when I will determine that, uh, swing play. If I'm not too confident, I will add two to three weeks 
to that contract um, mm. because, you know, that at the end of the day, the volume could be low. Um, and obviously that could kill your premium if you have like, you know, just a couple of days left on that contract. Um, but yeah, that's what I mainly use. And I'll get very specific with you on how I determine the swings um, in, the, in, the, in the next classes. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Also, if you guys want to know about something or, and want us to touch a subject, just let us know and we can yeah. make something for the next class. Yeah, yeah. These classes are not, there's no set, you know, it's not like an actual class where they give you a syllabus and all that stuff. If you guys want specific information, please let us know. We will spend as much time to get that information out to you guys. Um, you know, it could be basics, it could be advanced. You know, we want to make sure you guys understand everything. And I will, I think next week, we don't have a set schedule yet but we're gonna i'm gonna start um putting together the fundamental and technical analysis um how to understand balance sheets income statements and why i um invest in certain stocks that's where i'm at with it yeah Put you know, we, we, we do everything fire. yep mm -hmm. you know. all right so i probably for the next week i probably continue on candlesticks and i do time and sales and active trader yeah, we'll, we'll, and then please, uh, we, you know, in our, in our uh, suggestions channel, please put what you guys want to learn. Um, I'm sure we will review those, but we want to make sure that you got your guys' answer, our questions will be answered. Hey, so I'm, I'm just going to ask something like verbal right now, and then I'll, I'll like type in some stuff on um, the suggestions channel, but Really quick, guys, I was going to say, like, maybe in the future um, or the next one, whenever, I guess, like, maybe just, um, I, I want to know, like, like, the process of, of, like, how you guys will, like, look for a good stock and, like, mm -hmm. like what do you, uh, what indicators that you, like, look at to, to make sure that you're going to go into something, like, and, and these know, are options, kinda, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, I want to know, like, and what, the, why, why we picked the contract, why we picked the date and everything? Yeah, like, the yeah. thought process of it and, like. Mm -hmm what makes it so good you know? yeah yeah no we'll definitely get through it that's why you know that our you know earlier presentation in you know, the powerpoint we just wanted to go through the basics you know the the bid the ask and the date and stuff but we will um explain to you guys why we go into that specific expiration date why we pick you know that premium or uh, strike price um we'll go through all of that live i will actually you know go on the paper trade account um, obviously because it's a Sunday, we can't, you know, trade yeah. live, but I will make an example of why I, or, you know, Elkin can do it as well. Um, yeah. why okay. we pick this, um, date, premium expiration, all that. Okay, cool. Cool. Thanks dude. But yeah. No, but please guys, you know, put in the suggestions wherever you guys like. I definitely will actually. Yeah. Any more questions, concerns? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had one quick question. Are sure. these indicators like your indicators, like your universal indicators? Like you use them pretty much on every time frame, no matter what, or mm -hmm. like, because I'm looking at your setup right here. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering. Yeah, uh, for me, Elkin, you can you can chime in on this one. Yeah. Um, for me, it depends on the, in the stock. Like, like SPY, I will just use MACD volume um and ttm squeeze and we're gonna we're gonna teach you guys exactly what each indicator means um later on um i have studies for well actually i just removed a lot of them because i wanted to restart on my drawings and stuff but you know i'll have a facebook study i'll have a tesla study um it's just it depends on like the movement of each of these stocks so i like to have you know indicators that fits best for that certain stock Yes, because some, some stocks, they don't follow certain indicators. Like, there's some stocks with high IB that they can be oversold the whole time, and they're still going to go up. So just make sure that you you, you don't only rely on those. It's a, good, it's a good thing to have, you know, and it can give you an idea of what's going on. But if you want, but like, just because think about it, everybody can have those. That's right. You can start trading tomorrow and you can put all those indicators together. So everybody could be successful if they would work at fine. So it's good to have them to give you an idea on what's going on and to put them together. But 
you gotta look at other stuff like volumes, um, supports, resistance that you made yourself. Actually, like read the candlesticks, understand what's going on with the market, what's the market doing, try to go with it. So that's gonna give you a better way to get into positions than just following indicators. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, one last question, sorry. Yeah, no, uh, no, please. Is this uh, Think or Swim that you're showing on your screen right now? It is, yep. All right. Now, I use my phone for Think or Swim, so uh -huh. I, I've never used web, uh, but I probably might start using web because I see that there are a lot of things that you can do on web. Oh, actually. yeah, there is a lot. And next week, you know, once we start talking about technical analysis, I'm going to start out with, you know, I, I highly recommend everyone to get thinkorswim you don't have to put money in it you just get the application once you're ready to move from your previous broker um to thinkorswim you can obviously put money um but i will start the session next week on how to well first of all how to sign up for these accounts and once those, that once that's done um i will give a tutorial on exactly what you can do with this process like you know for example i'll do a quick one you know I, you know, we get questions, you know, how are you seeing all these, how are you seeing all these charts? I only see one, you know, we can just go to this grid section right here and I can pull up as I can literally pull up hundreds of, I, you know, I think it's like 35 charts or something. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, 32 charts at once. If I wanted to, obviously it's not going to give me a good, you know, uh, image, but, but yeah, I will go. There's, there's a lot of things. Um, you can, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I'll go through the whole thing um, next week, but it, it, this is a this is a great platform to have. Yeah, I started off with Robinhood, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think or I think we all did. Is, <laughs> yeah, so Thinkorswim is a little complicated for me, but I'm mm -hmm. getting used to it uh, yeah. slowly, slowly. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, it's... with these classes, it will really help. No, appreciate that. No, we will make sure everyone understands how to use this application. Uh, we highly recommend it. You know, you're, it makes you confident of picking those trades, confident of, you know, those orders being filled um, and just becoming a better trader. You know, they're, it's, you know, you feel like a professional when you really start to understand how to use Thinkorswim. But also, uh, Kieran, so we are talking about these indicators on the graph and the charts, right? Mm -hmm. And then there is another thing where we watch news as well, right? Yep, yep. Uh, uh, what are the current updates? Mm -hmm. Yep, so that will be more fundamental analysis. So that's going to be, you know, based on news, you know, what's going on in the market, um, understanding, you know, you know, if, if the CEO said something to their employees or, you know, et cetera, and then as far as understanding balance sheets, income statements, you know, the financials, that's more leaning towards outright shares. You know, if I, you know, if I put it in the chat, you know, I'm buying a hundred shares of this stock. That's because I'm confident in that stock. That's because their ethics are lined up. Um, you know, their financials are looking good and I'll, and I'll make a tutorial on how to understand, you know, balance sheets and all that stuff. Um, with options, it's more technical. You can use options as, Obviously, you know, fundamental too, because again, a great example is Elon Musk, you know, saying stock is too high. Then next thing you know, in five minutes, the stock drops like 70 points. So you got to be aware of those, you know, types of news that comes out um, to be ready. Like, especially now with the coronavirus, you know, you see MR, you know, they say MRNA coming out with a vaccine, the stock pumps 30%. Um, so fundamental analysis is great for options, but it's it's more technical but i we will go through both to make sure you know you guys understand you know how you, how you want to trade because some people do trade options on fundamental analysis um but well, we'll go through the that thing is sure. also, it, it, how, how long you want to have those positions if you're looking for a quick intraday play then you pretty much go with technical analysis but if you're looking on to swing a position for let's say four months three months then you probably want to make a research on their fundamentals. You want to see their balance sheet. You want to see their expectations, their growth. Right, that makes sense, yeah. Good Hi, question Kieran. though. Yeah. Um, I know we're going to, to have live trade on voice mm -hmm. every day, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yep. But but I was wondering if is it um too hard to share your screen on Zoom? So yeah, <laughs> I will actually. I won't. I won't live trade on Zoom. I will. We're gonna. We're gonna first of all fix this voice chat on Discord because you know last week before that whole thing. And I will explain to you actually what happened. Um, you know with that whole Discord change and stuff. Um, I will fix that voice chat on Discord thing. Okay. So I make sure we don't have to go through Zoom. We can just go straight from Discord to share my screen. I will also be, well, I got to figure out um, the Twitch channel because I don't want free members to, you know, hear me making the plays because that's not fair to you guys, obviously, because you guys are paying the premium. Um, so I'm going to figure out if I can do like a password protected Twitch channel where only you guys can watch it live, but I will have my screen shared on Discord um, for trading. So all you guys have to do is just click my name when it says live, and then it will say watch stream, and it will, you'll easily see what I'm doing live. Okay, that that's cool. Yeah, this Zoom was more of like an emergency <laughs> thing before we found out our voice thing was messing up. Um, but yeah, it, it will be uh, through Discord. Yeah, that's that's good so we can see what you see yep exactly and you'll see me you know pre-market i'll be drawing my trend lines i'll be you know reading the news you know i'll have cnbc you know on that's a cool thing with uh thinkersome as well i can turn on cnbc live so i can hear the news what's going on live as i'm trading and i have this on all the time um so i i really take advantage of that as well but yeah we, but- you guys will see everything but don't you need a CNBC Pro uh, membership to no, have CNBC you actually, Live? You actually don't. It comes with it. Oh, mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I, I got a uh, monthly one month free membership from uh, CNBC. Uh huh. Because I didn't know that uh, Thinkorswim platform gives us access to it. Yeah, yeah. No, they do. That's a, it's a great you know, it's a great thing they give us. Yeah, okay. because like as Elkin said, right, uh, technical analysis is more of like, you know, you want to do day trading, you want to look at the charts and all, but I wasn't doing that since I have no lot of, not, not a lot of experience in technical. So I was looking into the news and then trying to trade based on the news for like long term, like two weeks, three weeks down the road. Perfect. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's great. I, I, I love this platform. I mean, it gives you everything. Um, this this session is recorded, and I will um, send it out to you guys as well, as w- even with the powerpoints. Uh, and let me let me quickly explain what happened with the server. Um, we had this little problem. Do you guys remember our other analyst EFG? I don't want to say names, but I mean we have to at this point. He was actually taking plays um, from another group. 100% of the time. We didn't know that. He messaged us saying he traded on the market for 19 years on the New York Stock Exchange, all this, and he was he was creating a platform for an education software. And, you know, with Discord, it's kind of hard to screen people, right? You know, it's not like a regular company where you go through HR and, you know, go through background checks. You know, we, we believe them. And we got a message saying, you know, from a member, EFG is stealing plays. So we we banned them right away, um, and recently, you know, they said, "Listen, it's not your fault. You know, we didn't, um, you didn't expect, you guys didn't expect this to happen, but we would appreciate it if you can release that server and move on to a new one, just so we don't have any problems with previous members in that chat." And we listened to them. We wanted to be safe. We did. We wanted you guys to, you know, be comfortable in the chat. Um, it was more for you guys. Um, obviously it, it sucked doing it, you know, cause it was a lot of work building that server. Um, but again, we wanted to be on the safer side. And so we just created this one just to make sure there wasn't any you know, discrepancies with the future of this, um, you know, of this server. Um, so we apologize for all that, you know, craziness in the, on Friday, but we had to do it. And I'm, I'm, you guys are all ready to go. There's nothing you guys need to do on your side. Um, 
and now we're just more motivated to make the server better for you guys. And I will have, uh, as promised, the unusual option activity software ready for tomorrow. So this software will let us know how many contracts are being bought in this certain stock in this certain day. Um, and that will give us ahead of the market. I think I had a free trial, trial for like a day. And if anyone remembers that Zynga play, Zynga or there was another one I played on unusual option activity. Those were like 250% returns. Yeah, I thought that was insane. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we will have that for you guys on Monday. Um, I just had to talk with the developer and then they will implement it. So that's going to be a huge advantage for us as well. Um, on how we pick plays. It'll be great. I mean, we're not going to rely on it, you know, obviously hundred percent of the time. It's just good to know who's buying these contracts. Um, so. And that can, from, from Ali's question, that's going to be one of the things you want to improve. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to know which are the best options we can trade, and that's going to help us a lot. Mm -hmm. It's going to help you guys to, to find the best options to trade. Exactly. Yeah. This is all for you guys. All for you guys. There's a uh, sorry. No, no go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. There's a Twitter channel as well. Uh, sorry, a Twitter handle, Shader Flow, I guess. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's that. there's mm -hmm. there's a good amount of them. Um, we want to find the best one, so we've done a lot of research on the best. You know, flow, you know, unusual option activity. Uh, softwares, and we don't. You know, we don't want to basically you know just find it find one that works but you know at the same time we can't really rely on it we want to get the best one that'll work for you guys um because our goal is to make you guys obviously grow your portfolio um and make money so we want to find the best one for you guys and we're still we still got two left to you know to figure out which one we can get um or which one's better and then we'll go from there but tomorrow it will be ready for use Great. Yeah, I think what most of us probably should be focusing on on uh, on learning from you guys is just like how how to find those good options. I guess like Elkin said, you know, like yeah. what indicators to really pay attention to all that because mm -hmm. I mean it'll probably come in handy. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll we're gonna go in depth on you know why we pick these contracts, either fundamentally or technical. We'll go through everything. Awesome. Please, if you guys have questions, we're here all day. I we had, I can stay here for three hours, three more hours, ten more hours. Don't be shy. You can ask a million questions. So, do you draw your trend line every day? Um, uh, I mean, <laughs> sorry, uh, support resistance. I, I, uh, it depends. Um, I, if, if the stock has been consolidating for the past, like, you know, two days and there's nothing really coming out, it depends on the stock. You know, if, if it's Tesla, I, I would draw, I would draw every day, you know, depending on what's going on. Um, and Boeing as well. Uh, the big market cap companies, I will draw trend lines, um, just so I can have the support and resistance. And I know, you know, if, if it bounces off that resistance, you know, or I'm sorry, but yeah, bounce off that resistance or support. That's when I'll determine if you can go in for calls or support or puts, I should say. Um, and I look for three to five bounces on each line. So if, you know, the end of the candle hits the support line or the resistance line three to five times, that's my confirmation, um, especially on like the 30-minute chart. I do want a day chart as well just to see how the stock has been reacting um, throughout the week. Um, but I do mostly put my trend lines on high market cap, uh, companies, the smaller ones, not really. I use just, you know, the indicators for the small, small cap companies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I hate not knowing what questions to ask. <laughs> no, don't worry. And again, if you guys, you know, can't remember your questions right now, um, you know, we always have that question section. You guys can always, you know, put your questions in there. Um, 
and we'll, you know, we're always here to answer them as fast as possible. So that unusual activity uh, software that you'll be putting uh, on a Discord, and it will be helpful. But you said we should not be basing our decisions every time on that, yep. right? Yep, definitely, definitely. Um, so what I will personally do is I will look for, like if I'm looking at, you know, let's say like a biotech stock, right? And I, I will have the chart up. I will look at that contract and that unusual, unusual activity, activity, well, activity um, software, and kind of compare and contrast, like what am I seeing? You know, cause sometimes it could just reverse, right? So I will always have technical analysis um, as a confirmation. You know, I won't go blindly in the place say, oh wow, there's 30,000, you know, contracts being purchased for July, you know, $20 call for this stock, you know, and I'm, I'm just gonna buy it. Um, I won't do that. I will look at this, I will look at the chart, make sure, you know, that sounds legit um, and it fits, and it fits in my, you know, if I'm comfortable with it. Um, but it, it is good to have that background information. And sometimes, you know, if the premium is cheap, um, you know, that Zingo play was like $30. It ended up being, I think it went up to like 0.9 um, towards the end of the week. And if you, I mean, you could have made pretty good money um, if you bought a couple of those contracts. Um, but, you know, if they're cheap contracts, I'm feeling, you know, pretty good with, I mean, I'm not going to you know, alert these ones. Um, I will put in the chat and say, hey, I'm going into this, unusual uh, option activity play. You know, I'm seeing a lot of volume on this small premium, low risk. Um, you know, I'm okay losing $30, which I can make, you know, a hundred dollars off of it. So those won't be my actual alerts. Those will just be something that, you know, we can pay something for a, you know, a very inexpensive price and hopefully get a good return on it. So is that software like an intraday scanner, like um, trade ideas? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a real live data scanner. Um, I, I, literally in the seconds, um, who's buying what, um, and we'll know. We'll be ahead. It's literally like an active scanner. Like all orders that are coming in live, it will scan it. Wow. <laughs> That's like an insider news, actually. Yeah, it's basically like insider. It's like insider trading, but but legal. <laughs> <laughs> Flow algo is also there, right? Which Say is again? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's one of them. Yep, that is. We're looking at one of them. We're looking at that. We're looking at a couple others. We just want to make sure we get the right, the best product for you guys. Um, we want to make sure everything will be running smooth. Um, and all that. So we, we will, we, we will see what's, what's best. I've heard good reviews on full algo. There's another one. Uh, I forgot the name on top of my head, but I will, I will find it. Um, there are a couple of good ones. So just want to make sure we get the best product. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna go take care of some stuff, okay? Yeah, no worries, John. Good job I'm today. I'm gonna do my watch list tonight so you guys can see it. And I'm gonna explain you some details. And also, if you have any questions or want me to, re to review anything for you, just DM me. Appreciate everything, man. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Thanks, John. Okay. Okay, thanks for the class. Sundays? Say that again? Like, how, do you, how do you guys spend your Sundays as far as like prepping <laughs> for Monday? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, during the day, I will obviously relax. Uh, but right. towards the night, I will, again, like, you know, Stray asked, you know, when I draw my trend lines, I will draw trend lines. I will, you know, I will go on Yahoo Finance, see if there's anything going on with that certain stock. You know, if there's any news that I missed, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if it's determining that, you know, like Facebook, if Mark Zuckerberg said some stupid thing, you know, about right. whatever, I'll look at Facebook. Um, yeah, I, I, I just chart. I just draw. I literally just draw my charts. So for, for me, I, I just like to wait the whole weekend. First, I can relax a little bit. And second, it's just whatever happens, you're giving more time for things to settle. And then Sunday mm -hmm. night, like, I see what, like, what starts our hustle. For example, right now, the 
recruits coming up, so maybe I just take a look at oil stocks or like yeah. casinos stocks are, are reopening. And I yeah. try to like break down key levels. And with that, like, I look in it in the morning for pre-market and see if they look good and try to figure out a place after that. And I also oh, okay. have my old watch list that, like, I have my all my safe stocks, like the stocks that I always like to play, like Apple, Facebook, uh, Alphabet, all those. And I also keep an eye on those. But to find, like, new stocks and get pressed for new levels, that's what I do. I pretty much try to see what, what's hot during the week and then make some... Okay any kind of analysis over it and obviously okay. I, I don't i don't play earnings um yeah. but it's good to have in the you know it's good to have you know we, we obviously post the earnings reports every night on sunday or earlier once we get the information um and it's good to have in the background information you know i'll go through their financials and see their projected because that's what i do I, I you know financial modeling is my thing so i will take their financials and you know well analyze yeah. it myself and, uh, and I a good example on earnings is like Goku, like that stock was supposed to release earnings on Thursday. They were expecting to have a 78% growth and they, they released a 77%. So only for that percentage, the stock price dropped like 10 points. Just because mm. they missed that percentage expectation. expectation. Okay. I appreciate that. So like uh, you you said you you create your charts and you guys make your watch lists probably on Sunday, mm -hmm. but then Monday prices fluctuate right. Monday morning as soon as the market opens, sometimes things like just fly off. Yep, that yep. might be yeah. on your list. So do you still play it or do you just stay away from it then? Yeah, so that's what's really important about having the support and resist lines on like the one hour or one day charts, because if it breaks, let's say if it breaks that resistance line with a volume. You can see the, you can see the stock um, fly. You know, you you can you can be bullish on the stock if if the stock um, breaks the support line with volume. You can see the stock drop, right? So, um, but then again, with having those lines, that's where we like playing with momentum. You know, we don't have you know orders ready to go once market opens because with you know, the market fluctuates, and that's why I don't trade in the first 15, 30 minutes because I want to see where this market's going to take direction. Um, and so once I see those, those candles, you know, either break the resistance or support and has the right enough volume, then I will say, you know, for example, you know, Boeing above, you know, 205, because you know, 205 is my um, resistance line with volume, you can go for calls. Um, you know, Boeing below 200, you know, if it hits the support line with volume, uh, you can go for puts. Okay. Yeah, I gotta under get a better understanding of that, uh, like volume and trading based off of that. That's yeah. the part that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. over time, granted, I'm not gonna learn everything in a day, so. Mm -hmm. I'm, oh I'm yeah. For the long. Definitely. To be honest with you guys, you can figure out place just by looking at volumes, super resistance, and patterns. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like, we'll, yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you wanna look more about like? Or, or not look look for place, but look for movement, and then you can see if the if it's worth to open that position or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how safe is the volume chart? Like, let's say if we, I'm seeing this chart right now that's mm -hmm. on the screen. There are three green lines; those are mm -hmm. incremental, and then there are certain two red lines, right? Mm -hmm. So, so those, you see those two red lines. That means the bears are try are trying to take control. Right, so uh -huh. you're you're seeing the volume decrease when you see those do, two bear uh, bars. You see yeah. how how it's you know it starts here. Right, there's a lot of buying volume, right? Yeah. But then once you see this big uh, selling volume, you can see that the volume, even if even if there's this green green candle, right, the volume has decreased over time, right? And you can right. see the the price of the stock decrease. Um, so you got to be careful with the, you know that's why the, the three bar. Three bar is great to have, right? So these three right here, you know, a lot right. of buying volume, but then this bear, the bears are trying to come and take over, right? So right. when this big bear comes, obviously this, the share drops and then, you know, obviously the bulls are going to try to fight, but then again, the volume stays lower and then it ends up the stock, you know, follows the trend of the volume. Right. 
So basically, don't try to catch the peak. <laughs> don't, yeah. Don't try to catch the peak. Don't, you know, you see a stock, like, you know, you're playing AL, right? The stock is at $22. You see all this buying volume here. And you're like, okay, well, if there's a lot of buying volume, why don't I just go for a call? You know, I think, you know, we had a great example. I think um, someone went for a $17 call when it was at the high, right? You know, it was like 16 something. There was three, three green candles. Then that one red candle, that's the bull, the bears which you're going to try to fight. And that, that one red candle could screw your premium for the right. rest of the week. Um, Cause then the volume will decrease from the bulls. The bears will take over. It will start being a sell-off. Yeah, I think that's what happened with uh, Delta Airlines Friday. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was yep. shooting up and then kept going down. Exactly. Yeah. Right in the wave. You can't, you know, the FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. You know, you see this big candle right here. It's like, okay, you know, Boeing's going to hit 220 now, you know, but you just got to wait for that confirmation. Right. I think that was me on the American Airlines, but I, I put, it was like, I bought like six American Airlines contracts for a twenty call, a twenty dollar call, and then the next day it actually hit twenty two. Yeah, yeah. See, that's that exactly. That can happen too. You know, it reverses, right? You know, it, this is just more to have. You know, as far as if you wanted like a quick alert, right? But for for swinging, it's different. Uh -huh. It's different. So like, you know, you see this right here. If I see this at the end of the day, you know, it's a little bit of buying volume, but it means that the 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 bulls are more confident. You know, right? Mm -hmm at the end of the day. Um, okay. And that's when I'll say, okay, well, if the day ended with more buying power, you could, well, I'm, obviously it's going to be, I can't, you know, say that I'm going to go for a swing on Boeing right now, but, right. Um, but determine on my charts, my trends, um, I will go for that swing. I think, I think I actually misheard when we were talking about uh, American Airlines and I actually just was like, oh, okay, we're, we're talking about American Airlines. Let me go ahead and get these contracts. <laughs> and I think I just misheard and then bought a whole bunch of them yeah. and it just happened to work out. So I was just like, nah, that, that, I think I might, I think I've misplayed that, but it yeah. worked out in my favor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So hey, you can see my I, lines yeah, on the record. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. You, you drew the hell out mm -hmm. of that. Yep. So you see this big red. Right here, right. bears are in hundred percent control. Yeah, hundred percent. And this is at what time? This is a thirty-minute time frame. So this was at six thirty a.m. Um, at the high of two twenty-two point eight, and once you see that volume decreases, the bulls are not in control anymore. They're trying to get some control, but I mean, it was, you know, it was decreasing all day today, or that, that you know Friday. I think the only thing that saved me was the fact that they were expiring that Friday. Yep, exactly. And that theta will just, just eat you alive. Yeah. So as soon as you guys were like, yeah, let them go and just keep one. That's exactly yeah. what I did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Right on. So there, there are some earnings coming up this uh, this week, right? Yep. Uh, I think That's I was cool looking at, at yeah, I was looking at Adobe and uh, AVGO, Broadcom, and Chewy. Yeah, Chewy. So one of my Chewy friend, is, uh -huh. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, one of my uh -huh. friend uh, works at Chewy, and he's been saying that there are volumes of uh, orders that they have been packaging. And uh, he works at the warehouse, so he's mm -hmm. like, "This is going crazy." Really? But, yeah. Yeah. But you never know with the numbers, right? Exactly. Uh, even even if they're send, sending so many uh, orders, it might be possible that the revenue that people are expecting, it might not hit that, or it might mm -hmm. just cross it. You, yep. You want me to give you a good example? Disney. Yeah. Their earnings per shares were over. I mean, they missed it by like 0.23, big time. They missed it big time. Their yeah. stock shot up like it's a crazy price. I don't, I don't know the exact price it, it shot up, but <laughs> I mean, it, you know, you expect, you know, when you miss your, you know, the EPS is much lower than the expected, you know, you expect the stock to go down, right? Right. Uh, it just did the exact opposite. So earnings is very risky, very yeah. risky to play. Yeah, I learned it last week, uh, last to last week when I was uh, I was playing Salesforce and I, I asked you guys on the group and you said, uh, we don't play earnings. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, 
I went ahead with it and my premiums I paid for like I paid like 250 3 mm-hmm. and then I lost everything next morning I yeah. was like damn yeah and I will yeah we'll go through those types of situations too um you know the stop losses you know the, I when I always say stop loss risk management you know you don't want your contracts to burn right yeah so we'll, we'll go through those as well. You know, we're going to go through everything, every single thing about option trading and stocks and all that. Yeah. Zoom earnings and do shit for me. Yep. Zoom earnings. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I played Zoom pre-earnings. After that, I learned, uh, and you obviously said on the group as well, yeah. if you really are interested, then just play the pre-earnings. And I did that with Zoom and CrowdStrike. Because my portfolio was literally down to nothing. So I was like, I have to just yeah. take the last... You know, yeah. nice gamble. It paid off. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm out of Zoom now because of mm-hmm. the whole current thing winding down. I'm just, yeah. just too risky right now because it can go one way. It can go either corporate exactly. and grow or it can just die. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm out of it. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, is there a way to link um, Thinkorswim to your Yahoo Finance account? Because uh, it's not on the broker list. Hmm, interesting. I have not done that, and I have no idea how to do it, but let me see if I can. Because I was looking at Reddit, and they they were like, there's no way, but I'm pretty sure there's probably a way to link it. And that would just help me a lot. Web link, maybe to this. If you have a finance account or something. Okay. I can, I mean, I can try it. Yeah, I would hope. I mean, let me see if it'll do anything. I can go on my Yahoo Finance portfolio. Okay. Oh, no. So let's see what I do, what happens. I did it. I don't know what. Um, I think this might just mean like people will see this information on user info. And ch- oh, okay. So it's just gonna if so if I'm in some random chat and think or something, it's gonna show this link I'm affiliated with. I don't think this is gonna be. I'll look into it. I'll see what I can do. Maybe there should be. You know, if you have like a watch list on Yahoo Finance, you want to put it into think or something. I think there should be. Yeah, I just go on Yahoo Finance and it says mm-hmm. link broker account mm-hmm. and it's just not on there. It's not on the list. So for me, well, not. Account. So it says... Yeah, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll look into it more tonight. Uh, maybe I can see if I can find something. That's actually interesting. I kind of I, I want to know if that will work. It should so my work. other broker, I have it on my iPad, on uh-huh. your iPad, and then I have my other monitors just watching. You know, think or swim. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I will. I will look into that tonight. See if I can okay. find anything. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. On my phone, I'm using Thinkorswim when Mm -hmm. I tried on the call itself. And uh, I'm trying to play around with the charts. Uh, I I figured why my charts were not showing up. Oh, that's right. right? It was just just squeezing in and squeezing out. (laughs) Oh, really? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I was was like, man, that was so weird. Yeah, I I dragged it out and and it just zoomed in. So that's what (laughs) happened. (laughs) I'm yeah. well, glad, glad it worked. Glad it worked. But I see the uh, chart at the bottom where mm-hmm. we are talking about the volume, but on mm-hmm. phone, it only shows gray lines. It doesn't. Yeah, I, I don't chart on my phone. It's just, if, for me, it's way too cluttered and close to each other. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, mine is actually just gray. I mean, I have to change the colors, I think, as far as the volume. Um. But I would highly recommend using 
the, the desktop format and, and I'll, uh, you know, I can teach you guys obviously how to set this, set this up on your desktop too. Um, but as far as, you know, ordering the contracts, I use my phone just so I can see it better. You know, cause if you go, you know, if you go trade, right, it's very like, it's not hard to see cause I kind of just spread it out a little bit, but you know, once you actually go into it, you got all this lined up um, and the, the prices might change very fast, but it's kind of small to see. And if you click, uh -huh. if you click confirm or whatever, you know, you might buy at the price that you don't want it at. Um, so that's why I kind of use my phone because the premium is like right there. Right. So is it uh, always helpful to put your, uh, our, our value that we want to buy a contract at below the ask price? Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. There, it depends. Most of the time. Yes. Because if it's a low volatility, um, I would go for the bid or maybe in between, um, like mid level because the premiums won't move as fast. So you, you're pretty confident that you're going to get that price. Now, if you're playing Tesla, right. You know, yeah. Tesla's premium go crazy. You know, you're going to, you're going to bid for, you know, a 440 contract, but ne the next thing you know, it's already 475. Yeah. So for Tesla, I would just, I would buy market. It could be a little more expensive, but your order will fill, you know, right away, right away. Yeah. Um, Cause you're buying exactly like what the market is asking. Uh, it could be more expensive, but you know, if you have your, if you chart Tesla, right, if you have the right volume, all that, you know, all those indicators set up and you're confident at play, you don't, you're not going to worry because if you're confident that premium will go up, you know, it's making profit. But at the same time, if it, if it breaks out, if it reverses, that expensive play that you made could go down and you're paying a lot more than if you got the price that you wanted at, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, I always try to find the premium that I want. I don't, I don't usually ask for the ask, um, but if I am confident in that play, um, I will enter the ask. And if the ask is very, like if this spread is very high, I'm not going to play it at all. You know, I'm not going to pay an extra $50 um, for that premium. Not 50, you know, $5, whatever. Um, so I always go, you know, either mid between the bid and the ask or bid. If last case, you know, worst case scenario, I'll just go for the ask, buy it and, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Right. So on Robinhood, you see uh, Robinhood already like mediums the value, right? Yep, they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that the right value to buy it at on Robinhood? Uh, yeah, I mean, think or so. yeah, they make it simple. Like, cause you know, they're just gonna, add, you know, get you the mid the whole time. Yeah. I think you can change it. You can change it to what the bid and ask is, unless you can't. I'm not sure. I haven't used it in a long time. But if you go on, you know, if I go here, you see this right here? Yeah. So I would, you know, if I'm going to buy it, right? But you see how the spread is very high? You know, 4, yeah. 10 to 5, it's very high, right? I'm going to probably ask for maybe 4, 9. You know, I'm not going to go 4, 10. No one, no one is going to buy this. Right. Buy it at this. Um, you know, I'll go for maybe you know, 4, 9, you know, 4, 8, 5 at most. Um, but yeah, with Robin Hood... It will ask for the bid. Sometimes it could screw you because it could be too expensive that you can sometimes get the bid ask. Um, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can see when you buy a contract, you're like, wow, I'm already down $20 and, you know, stock hasn't even moved. But that's because, you know, you paid the extra, the extra premium. That happened to me with uh, American Airlines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I was a beginner, I, I remember... Um, I remember like buying these option contracts and like, I'll always be down in the beginning. It's like, I have to work my way up. Um, like all the time, you know, I'll be like, I'm down $15 already. And then some, everyone else is like, yeah, I'm up, you know, 7% just, you know, from just when I bought the, the contract, I was like, wait, how is that even possible? I bought the same contract. He said, well, we asked for the bid. You always ask, or you always purchase the ask price, you know? So you're basically making their premiums go higher because you're buying the higher price. So, mm -hmm. so you, that's why we always say like, okay, when he plays these alerts, he says, 
if I don't get this premium, I'm not going to play it. I, there is no reason for me to play a much more expensive premium and wait a little longer to get, you know, to break even and then hopefully make profit out of it. Um, you make the right entry, you'll be profitable most of the time. Right. Yeah, so I'm swinging an airline, American Airlines mm -hmm. for Monday. Mm -hmm. So for anybody listening, this is kind of my own example. Mm -hmm. So to break even, it's going to have to get to, hold on, what is it at right now? I think it was a 1.40. That's what I bought in at. Ask was 1.3 something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you so you pay ten dollars more, right? But that's that's not not that's not actually because you know you you know you bought the ask price. That's because when you bought it, that premium dropped. Yeah. Right. So it you know we're I, we're supposed to be talking about you know when you're paying for this. Um, contract in the beginning, you know, determine how much they bid or ask for. Um, and, and, you know, we'll get into this as well, but when you have the, when you're confident in these plays, you know, you can average down, right? So say you buy the, the one, the first contract at 1.4, you know, if you're, if you're still confident and the, the premium goes down to let's say 1.2, but you think that regardless of what's going on, I, I will swing it and I'm confident I will buy another one at 1.2, you know, just to make the premium a little, you know, averaged out. Um, you buy one premium cheaper, one premium a little more expensive, you know, it kind of cancels out. Um, and yeah, but with that, that's because, you know, you bought it thinking that it would, you know, increase the stock, but it reversed and then your premium went lower. So, um, I have hope. It's at yeah. 19.09. Oh no, yeah. It, it, looks, 20. it looks good. It looks good. Did you talk about scalping at all? Or is Kiki um, gonna Kiki's going to, yeah, time? Kiki is the scalping master. She will have a whole session on uh, scalping. I am gotcha. more of a swinger and momentum trader. Yeah. All right. What does scalping even mean? Scalping is one to two minutes of trading for one stock. So yep. I, I buy, I buy a, point cheap cheap prices too so i buy a, a 0.3 call two minutes later i sell for 0.35 i'm out I'm uh, you're mostly yeah. trading with high volatility stocks exactly. and if you if you scalp tesla you're a fucking yolo master yeah you're you're <laughs> oh okay all right all right yeah. that was that was that put it into context for us. <laughs> right there sounds like me <laughs> Pretty much, you're uh, you're putting your ass on the line if you scalp anything like Tesla with high volatility. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna notice your heart is gonna be pumping out of your chest and you might pass out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get banned on Robinhood. Think, yeah, think of scalping as playing a short with options. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And am I all uh, Robinhood, uh, man? Uh, it says three days to transfer my funds back to my bank before I can deposit them into uh, Thinkorswim. Yep. Uh, wh what day was that we were talking about? I that? believe that was does, Friday, right? Fr but does week does weekday weekends count? No, it's I it's business don't day. So. Yeah, it's it's. Ah, uh, uh, so uh, so I can't do it till like Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Probably probably Wednesday. I'm just gonna. All right, whatever. I'm just gonna put more money in anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but again, what you can do, what you can do is, if you have your thinkorswim set up, right? If you don't mind, I mean, you can either trade on Robinhood still with, with the amount of money you have in there. But if you don't mind waiting those couple of days, getting used to the uh, thinkorswim platform on the desktop application and phone and paper trade, you can paper trade live. And there's a delay though. There's is a paper delay. trade the same market. Paper trades the same market, or you can literally pick any day of the market, you know, in the past, I don't know, 10 okay. years or something, um, and okay. practice how it works. Yeah, and I, that's why I recommend, you know, just because, you know, sometimes when you go right into trading uh, and playing these alerts and you use the platform, you can buy, you know, yeah, you know, 10 puts instead of, you know, one call. Gotcha. I almost did that by accident. <laughs> yeah. So when we set up, when you help me set up my account, so it's just, uh, because when I got banned on Robinhood for, you know, doing too many uh, trades for, you know, um, what's, what was I going to say here? I totally forgot what I was going to say. So I um, kind of forgot that message to support. The uh, pattern day trading? 
Yeah. Which, yeah. So I can uh, use it to my uh, <laughs> value, how much mm -hmm. of my account's worth mm -hmm. for the five days. Correct? Yep. Yep. And then it resets. It resets after. So it's not just three three trades per five days, right? So for thinkers, no. If you have a cat, like the the it's like the ca uh, cash account. Yep, yeah, the cash account. So what that means, there's no pattern day trading. So that means you can make more than three day trades a day. But you have a thousand dollars. You pay two hundred for yep. an option contract. You have eight hundred dollars left for that day to trade. So you can make as many trades as you want until that eight hundred dollar buying power is finished. What if it's not an options trade though? What if it's just like you're just trying to scalp and you're just trying to like... No, yeah, scalp, scalping is the same. So scalp, we're, we scalp options, right? We don't, we don't scalp yeah. stock. Yeah. So it's just, it, it works the same. Scalping, day trade, swing trade. Well, swing trade doesn't even matter because that's not even a count as a I just trade. don't want to get banned on you're, Think or Swing. No, you're not. Don't worry. Don't even worry about that. Trust me. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. You're right, not going to get banned. Mm -hmm. He won't get banned. No, it's no, simple. no, no, it, yeah, it trusts yeah, me. Yeah, I you, just got locked, twelve hundred dollars locked. You know, so no, I'm, I'm telling you, Robinhood literally takes your money by that thing. That's why they don't, don't trust Robinhood. No, I skipped right past it. Yeah, team. I was gonna make a, I was gonna uh, make a lot of money on it, and I, I they locked me out. And you're and locked, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, yep. Tough. That's why you know. <sighs> I don't know. People gotta take advantage of cash accounts. You know, they ever, some people say, oh, it's not good because you're restricted to, you know, your buying power. It's like, well, you don't have to make, you know, if you have a thousand dollars, you're not going to, you know, buy a $900 worth option. You yeah. Know? Cause that's all your money, you know, that's it. Then you have a hundred bucks left then, to trade. Yeah, exactly. You know? Um, so, and even if you sell it for a profit, you can't even use that profit till the next day. Yep. Awesome. Cause right when I got so, screwed up on Ron Robinhood, you like you like explained everything. Yeah, I was like, like just get what out. You're doing. Just get out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'll happily tell that to everyone who's using Robinhood. I don't want you guys to lose money because I've lost a lot of money by Robinhood and their problems, their execution prices, all that. Like it's not even just like the pattern day training. It's their system, like their software. It sucks. Like you can tell, you know, when you place an order, they'll give you a message at first, say, "Hey, we received your order." You know, if this is an order, to execute blah blah blah. It's like, dude, just fill my order and move on. You know, think or swim. Give me a warning or anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You just think or swim. You put, place your order and it will fill. Instantaneous. Yeah, you don't even have to worry. I also That's don't trade with Weeble. Weeble is kind of sketch. Yeah, I don't. Next reviews of Weeble. I tried using it, but I just can't get my head around the the platform. It just looks. Like, I don't know. I, I, I highly recommend, you know, Thinkorswim. I, I, I mean, I don't know. And no, I do not work for Thinkorswim if anyone's listening. <laughs> <laughs> On uh, Thinkorswim, um, when you're logging in, the mm -hmm. little cogwheel, mm -hmm. and it shows the uh, memory usage, mm -hmm. I was told to bump that up because, uh, you know, it updates faster. Yeah. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what should be my uh, memory usage? 64, 32? What, what, what do you use? Where do you see that? Is I'm that pretty sure that's measured in gigabytes. So, whatever, how many, how many gigabytes of RAM do you have? Yeah. 16. Mm -hmm. 16. So, that's your limit. So, going up to 64 won't do anything. But the minimum is only 30. Two. Oh, you talking about? Oh, you talking about the second option? Maybe it's not. It says there's a 32 all the way up to 2048, and then um, what the megabytes hell? go to uh, 768 to 13,000. Is this on the? This is on the PC. Yes, this is before you log in. Oh, gotcha, all. gotcha. Okay, wait. Let me. I want to try that. I want to see what mine's at. That's interesting. I didn't even think about it. Think or swim all 32 gigs of RAM on my PC. See what happens. <laughs> Because default is just 32 by uh, whatever, 17. Interesting. So mine goes all the way to 512. Oh, what? I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Don't even, don't listen to that. 512, 256, 128, 64, 32. I'm on 32, 768. Yeah, that's the minimum. I was just wondering, like, mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. I mean, you know, my like, I just want of, stuff to update uh, it just as I want to update it like as fast as it possibly can. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I use 
32768 for memory usage and it works fine. I didn't even know, I honestly didn't even notice um, it even had that setting actually. Okay. My keyboard's too loud, just tell me to mute. Yeah, no Can't even hear it, man. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, that class was an introduction. It was a little, it was our first time ever, you know, having this, these kind of classes. A little nervous, I should say, but hopefully it went well. Yeah. You did fine, brother. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Gotta play some fucking Tarkov. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm down for some COD, you know, just hit me up. <laughs> I hate that game now. <laughs> it was a beautiful thing in the beginning when all the microtransactions <laughs> the kids the kids take mommy's credit card hey mom let's open some cases yeah. <laughs> can I get some keys oh, I was Wait. over at my girlfriend's house yesterday uh, and uh, okay. her brother was playing Warzone and he's like do you play this I said no I really don't really play it anymore he said yeah I just burned through $40 on uh, cosmetics it's like real money you spent real money he said yeah God, for Crazy. what? All right, guys. If you have any more questions, suggestions, you know where to, the channels, you know, that are for you guys. I'm going to log off, get some, eat some food, relax. Um, but if you do have questions, you know, right now, please ask them. I can stay on for, you know, a couple of minutes. All right. You guys have a good day, man. I'm here. Yeah, yeah you too. Thanks for joining. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jim. Of Bye. course. All right, guys. We'll see you in the chat. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I'm, I'm going to be looking up the Yahoo Finance thing, yeah. too. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll let you know if I can find anything. Yeah, I appreciate that. And of you guys course. have a good day. Yeah, you too, guys. Yep. See you guys. See you guys.